Oh, everyone, finally some nice weather here, though. It's still a little bit chilly and kind of gray and messy in our backyard, but we're happy to be outside. I have a few things for you on this episode. So Todd Blessing sent us pictures of Eastern bluebirds on his nuts and suet feeder. You know, I've always considered bluebirds more of a insect eating birds, but I guess this time of the year they're adjusting their diets and are just quite happy to eat shelled peanuts and suet. If you're in Texas or thereabouts, Jesse Huth is busy with birding walks. He actually has a bunch of birding tours lined up in the States uh, all summer long and in the fall. So if you're looking for a birding tour, please feel free to reach out and contact Jesse Huth. And finally, this is the time of the year when I start saving our eggshells and this is when I offer them to my backyard birds. You can simply crush up eggshells and mix them with bird seed and then serve them in your bird feeders for the birds that visit bird feeders. Or you can just toss them anywhere on your property for the birds that don't care much for bird feeders. Please make sure that you serve cooked eggshells, either boiled or baked. And if you're baking them, you just need to toss them in the oven for a few minutes until they dry, but not brown. At some point, John Petrus from Pennsylvania had 11 northern cardinals around his bird feeders. Then the numbers started to dwindle and last year he barely saw any northern cardinals. So he's wondering what is going on. John, you always ask such interesting questions on the bird behavior you observe right in your own backyard. And who wouldn't be excited to witness a gathering of almost a dozen male northern cardinals all in one spot? Now you say that the number has halved itself and lucky today there might only be one or two. In my backyard in Baja, Mexico, for example, in winter all I ever get is a single male and a female. But you are curious as to why you don't get these large cardinal congregations every winter. Well, first let's address male cardinal behavior in general. Overall, they are not the most sociable of birds. In spring and summer, they are highly territorial and the males can be heard and easily seen belting out their beautiful songs high overhead in tree branches to frighten off competitive intruders. Unlike many other small perching songbirds, northern cardinals don't migrate. I often saw them in the dead of winter in Montreal over a 40 year span, looking so gorgeously blood red against the backdrop of white snow. While they do maintain a loose feeding territory in winter, the males will sometimes gather in goodly numbers, as many as 40 in one place, at a popular foraging location involving one or more platform bird feeders offering their favorite seed, usually sunflower. The lure of the food simply overrides their territorial urges, which is usually driven by hormonal influences. John, you suggested a number of potential factors that might be causing the occasionally large gathering in the yard, but basically ruled them all out. My feeling is that the food in the surrounding habitat was not particularly abundant, and so they basically overlooked their differences and put up with each other's company to take advantage of your undoubtedly sumptuous fast food. And here I thought you were going to ask me the obvious question. What does one call such a gathering of bright red male cardinals? While there exists quite a few collective nouns, the ones that make the most sense to me are a college of cardinals or a conclave of cardinals, mainly because they're named cardinals after religious figures in a Catholic church who wear bright red gowns and pointy hats. Brown-headed cowbirds are generalist brood parasites, laying their eggs in the nests of many other bird species and letting the host parents raise their young. But what happens when a cowbird hatches into nests with different numbers of host nestlings, say one versus four? A team of scientists at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign campus sought an answer to this intriguing question by attempting to understand the strategies cowbird nestlings employ to survive in the nests of prothonotory warblers bearing different numbers of nestlings. What generally happens is the following. If a cowbird ends up in a prothonotory warbler's nest containing four of the host nestling, the cowbird either dies or the number of warbler nestlings drops to two. Unlike common cuckoos, Cowbird nestlings do not eject eggs or directly kill the young of the host species. What they do instead is actively outcompete their nestmates by hatching out earlier, raising their heads higher, and by begging more loudly and continuously. And because they generally grow larger than their host's young, the cowbirds require more food. Setting up a carefully controlled nest box study in a southern Illinois swamp, 
The scientists manipulated parasitized nests of prothonotary warblers by translocated eggs and young to form nests with zero, two, or four warbler nest mates. They then quantified how many cowbirds survived in each of the three scenarios, and they found that the cowbirds survived best in nests shared with two host nestlings. Apparently the cowbirds somehow managed to reduce the host brood sizes down to two, perhaps by stealing food from their nest mates, which is a topic for a future study. It's believed that this is a form of niche construction, which means that the cowbird is actually modifying its environment to enhance its own survival. And more about brown-headed cowbirds. If you are a lucky host of a huge flock of blackbirds, if you look closer, you might spot a few cowbirds amongst them. This year, my flock doesn't seem to have them. And in the past, luckily, the cowbirds that visited my backyard never really ventured to my bird feeders. To be honest with you, brown-headed cowbirds are not the most popular and desirable backyard birds because of their nesting habits. As you know, they never really build their own nests, but females lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Over 220 host species to be precise, and she can lay up to 40 eggs per season. As you remember, most songbirds have about four to five eggs per season. Cowbirds' chicks know that they have to survive in other families' nests. When those chicks get a little bit older, they have huge appetites, which puts a lot of pressure on their host parents. It's the males that have brown heads, hence the name brown-headed cowbird. And long time ago, these birds used to follow herds of buffalo and cattle and would feast on all the insects that the cows had flushed out. Brown-headed cowbirds' diet is mostly seeds and all sorts of creepy crawly things. But if you see these birds at your feet, please discourage them from visiting them because easy access to food means more fat and more eggs. So how does a female cowbird know where other birds have their nests? Well, she actually watches them for a while until she sees them build a nest. Smart birds! I loved all the spring pictures and our spring is back photo concerts because spring is not here quite yet. So let's check out the top five. Here's the third place. The second place. And the grand prize winner. Congratulations, everybody. May is Mother's Day month. So we thought we'd dedicate it to all the beautiful women around us. So our theme is Pretty Woman. All right, everyone, goodbye for now. Have a wonderful week. My dog is here. She wants to go for a walk. Take care, everyone. I'll catch you in two weeks. Bye.